going to knit one row at tension 5 and then one row at tension 8. The reason for that loose row is we're going to hang this button band, button hole band, over the top of the right front. And then we're going to pull the last row of stitches through the fabric of the front. By knitting one loose row, it gives us just a little more wiggle room and it works better so that there's not a really big pull along the front edge. So, one row at tension five, one row at tension eight. Okay, since I'm going to use the thread from the carriage, the yarn from the carriage, to join I'm going to measure this four times across. Plus just a little bit extra. I'd rather cut off 12 inches than run out. And then I'm going to take it off on waist yarn. And when I get that done, I will be back. Take off everything dangling. If you have weights, pull them off. Well, it doesn't look like a whole lot at this point. Pull out your contrast. Now that I want it to come out, it won't. Okay. Again, like we said before, this band really needs a blocking. It doesn't need a lot. Usually just a, a small shot of steam or two will do the trick. And as long as you're careful, very careful, you can usually very lightly steam block most acrylics. But again, it's very lightly and very carefully. And I would definitely recommend make a swatch, practice on your swatch so that you know what it's going to do. You don't want to put a steam iron down on your finished sweater and ruin it. And believe me, it can happen. Okay. Yeah, this will work a little better once we get it attached to a garment. There's a buttonhole. This is what the buttonholes look like. And then the little one on this end also. Okay, what I'm going to do now, this doesn't look like much and it's pretty hard to explain without you being able to see it. So, what I'm going to do is take our gauge swatch. Remember I said we were going to use that. And I'm going to reposition this camera a little bit. All right. Now, I left all of those needles in work position. We know that that's how many stitches we need. really important that you stay in the same column. See where this line is? 
if you veer back and forth this way it shows so really take your time and make sure that you're in the same column all the way up now I didn't take time to figure out the precise spacing so what I'm going to do is go up to where the waist or the contrast yarn is on the top side also and hang that much I'm picking up three stitches per every four rows in these sections and then when we get through the contrast color I'm going to show you a little bit different way to do it you don't need to measure this it doesn't have to be precise down to the exact row but find the halfway point and since we know that's the halfway point that makes this one easy and I'm going to put that on the first needle right of center zero. And I'm going to split these in half. Approximately. They don't have to be down to the exact needle, but get it close. Get it as close as you can do it just by looking at it. And then go back and fill in. Now where I have a gap this big, I'm going to try to find the approximate center and then go back and fill in. See how much easier this is? You don't have to count it out. You just simply eyeball it. Okay. Now we're ready to put this back on. Okay, take the waste yarn side. And make sure you get every stitch. This is really important. What I'm doing is, again, I'm using my thumb as sort of an extra tool, and I'm putting the stitch in the hook, and then flipping the latch closed. Well, what I'm doing is bringing the needle all the way out, the working needle all the way out, so that the fabric is behind the latch. You'll find it's a little easier going than I am because I'm trying to work around the camera. And you could just put everything on back on the bed and then go through and manually make sure that these needles are arranged this way. What you're going for is the fabric back behind the latch the band in the hook and the latch closed. I prefer to do it in one step, but you can certainly do it any way that works better for you. I'm going to do this all the way across and then I'll be back. Now we're going to push all of the stitches through the fabric. You could do it like I am here, manually with my fingers, or you can use the needle pusher. You just need to get all of those stitches through the fabric. 
and that leaves us with just one stitch on each needle. This right here is actually the edge of the front. of the garment front, the center front of the sweater. Now we're going to do just what we did when we were hanging the hem. This one on the outside can be a little bit hard to get. See I'm just picking up one loop just exactly like the way we did when we hung the hem. And there really aren't any rules about how to go do this. You can use a transfer tool or you can use your fingers. As long as you get those loops picked up, really doesn't matter how you did it. The only time I really, really use the transfer tool is on the end stitches. They can be a little bit difficult to pick up. Even with the transfer tool they can be. And now we just need to bind off. And it really doesn't make that much difference how you bind off. I normally would use either a sewn bind off at this point or the quick um, knit one row loose bind off. But since we're trying to save time, I'm going to just do that this time. Turn the tension dial up as high as it will go. That's nine and then knit one row. Now remember I said I measured four times the length of the yarn when I took the band off. This is all that's left. So I would definitely go four times the width of the bed before I cut this. A lot of times I'll go three or three and a half, but since I knew I was going to be up at a very loose tension, I gave myself a little extra. And then I've dropped a stitch here somewhere. Oh, there it is. And it did not get knitted. Well, I'm going to cheat. If this was a garment, I'd go back and take that row out and redo it. But this is just a sample, so I'm going to cheat. Okay, pull the yarn in through the last stitch to fasten it off. And I'm going to take the time to push those needles back because I tend to get hooked up in them. Now remove the waste yarn. Okay, this is what it looks like immediately right off the machine. This has not been blocked. 
I haven't done anything to it except pull out the waste yarn, which you just saw me do. Okay, I would definitely recommend steaming. Now, this is a stockinette garment, stockinette rolls. Doesn't matter if you have a band on it, it rolls. Um, steaming will help, but I want you to see what it's doing when I let go. Where's the band? It's in there. The band is non roll. It isn't rolling. But it's going right along with the fabric that is rolling. So even though you're using a non roll band, be prepared for your cardigan front edges to flip over to the inside because some yarns are really bad for that. And this one, if I didn't get it blocked pretty good, I think would probably roll over twice. See, all you've got to do is just let go, and it's all rolled up again. Okay, one thing we did not yet talk about was how to make a wider button band, because as you can see, this is very narrow. It's definitely a baby-sized band. I probably would not add any more down here because these buttonholes are very close to the edge and I'd rather have more fabric above them and not necessarily below them. So what I would do, if it were me, and this is the way I will be writing the pattern, instead of four rows on the back, I would knit six rows on the back. And instead of six rows on the front, we would do eight rows on the front. I hope you've enjoyed this little tutorial and that you find it useful.